I have Boy? a special, I, I got a super special guest today. Boy, please. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, another episode of Gonzo and Friends. I have a very special guest with me today. Her name is Christine from In the Ring with Christine. And also in her new podcast, uh, Woman Crushing It Wednesdays, um, yes. along with her cast. But um, Christine, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to talk with you today. And um, I know you're a very, very busy person. So, you know, thank you for squeezing me in into your very busy agenda. But um, great thank to have you. Thank you. I what's, appreciate um, being here. What's been going on on your side of the world? Well, right now I'm on a little break. Um, we just got back from Italy um, a couple of weeks ago uh, with the team for the second qualifier. So I'm on a break until the 28th of this month. And then um, I'm going to fly to Colorado and then we'll be going to uh, Bangkok, Thailand for the third qualifiers. Thailand. So I'm busy at home too, though, because uh, it seems like when I'm gone, nobody does anything. They don't wash dishes. They don't go grocery shopping. They don't. They don't do what they need to do. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, those are sometimes some of the things we take for granted, um, you know, when we have a very, uh, that very special person that, that takes care of the other half or, you know, in fact, sure. maybe at times even more than half, right? But, uh, hey, Christine, so I know I have the pleasure of knowing you a little bit personally and um, know a little background on how you deal with boxing and things like that. But I want to take this opportunity to let your fans know and the fans of Gonzo and Friends you know, a little bit more about you, dive in a little bit more on that personal side. And I want to start off with your childhood because I, I want to get into how you got into boxing and, um, and into the things you're doing now. So can you tell me a little bit about where you're from, where you, where you were uh, raised and, and things like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I was born in June 30th, 1970 in Austin, Texas, um, to Matt and Estella Martinez. And I was the firstborn. Um, I think they probably, well, I think my mom probably wanted a boy, but used to carry on the name because uh, we have also have some businesses that are, um, you know, to be carried on um, throughout the family. Um, so I was born, and my grandfather, uh, whenever he was younger, on my dad's side, he was a boxer. He was he did that all the, the Golden Gloves, Pan American Games. Um, you know, he was a professional fighter, but my grandmother said, you know what, if you don't stop this, I'm leaving you. So he had to stop. So I had a little bit of that blood. Um, and then on my mom's side, um, my cousin, Jesse Benavides, um, was a world champion. And so I had it there, too. It was just like I was doomed to somehow, you know, fall in love with boxing. Um, I can remember early on, I think I was like four or five years old, that Jesse would come. He lived in Corpus Christi. And he would come, and all his team would spend the night at our house. And they would just be, like, all over the living room, all over the courts, because they had a tournament the next day. And um, they'd have to get up really early for weigh-ins. So I remember the excitement of, like, seeing all these boxers everywhere and thought, oh, my gosh, this is so amazing. Um, and then I didn't really um, decide or really completely follow up with boxing until I saw the first Rocky. I was six years old. Um, I said, oh, my God, I want to be a boxer. Um, and that time, it was just, girls don't box, you know. My mom had me in ballet and gymnastics and, and tap, and I sucked. But um, I can say sucked, right? But, uh, but uh, anyway. Okay. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so um, that, that was like my little fantasy world, my little fantasy dream. And um, I had um, a, a living nanny, Maria. Um, and she took care of me and she, she and I would drink raw eggs, you know, because Rocky did that in the first Rocky, but she's like, I me try, you know, this is, it's a salad limon and then you can drink it. So I did. And I thought I was going to be stronger and, and I was going to be a boxer. And a little time passed, life happened. Um, I, I moved to, to Dallas at 15, and my brother, my older brother, who was adopted when he was five, um, he joined um, a, 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 a boxing club. Um, and I was so jealous, you know, because he got to do it, and I wanted to do it. So he, he was there for a couple of years, but he didn't care for it too much. Um, he was mentally challenged, so it was really hard for him to adjust, and, and even though he thought he was just, you know, the the next coming, you know, of Mike Tyson. Um, he dreamt big, huh? 
he dreamt big. He did. Um, and so anyway, I, I ended up, uh, you know, being a, a pregnant teen, um, got married really young, um, had child after child. Um, I have 10 children today, um, a stepson, and I have 10 biological. And um, I finally, I got a divorce at 28, um, and I had my eighth child at that time. And I said, you know what, I've got these boys, and um, I only had two daughters at the time, and the rest were all boys. And I said, they need something to do. So I talked to a friend. He told me that he was at this gym, and I was like, hell yeah. So I put all my boys in there, but secretly I wanted them to, like, say, do you want to train too? And they did. They ended up asking me if I wanted to train too, and would I like to spar and compete? I was like, yes. So I started training with all the boxers, and and I never did get to compete, but I did get to spar many times. And then as my boys started to advance and do really well, um, they asked me if I wanted to continue on and, and maybe compete or did I want to help in, in the training and coaching of my boys. And I was like, absolutely, I would love to, to be a coach and help them. So all the OGs, you know, the Mato Locos were there and they took me under their wing. And they showed me the ropes. And, and the rest is history. That must have been about 2000, I guess, maybe, something like that. Um, and I met my husband shortly after that in 2003. We got married in 2004. We had two more children. And we opened, had a boxing. Uh, uh, we were in the boxing gym that whole time. And then we opened up our own boxing gym in 2007, Texas Select Boxing Club. And so we, we've had it ever since. So let me segue into that. I mean, there's a lot of perseverance there. I mean, just be one that you mentioned that your dad probably wanted a boy, right? And and he's getting that that element in your perseverance in, into wanting to get into boxing and you're finding all those opportunities. You mentioned your your kids, right? You have 10, 11 kids, right? Or 10 yes. biologically, you yes. said? Uh-huh, um, yes. The idea that someone has you know, at times one kid and they're like, I can't do what I really, my dreams are, I want to follow and things like that. Like Mm -hmm. in all that, in the midst of all of that, you have all your kids and you still find the perseverance to follow your dreams and do what you want to do. Where do you find that motivation? Like what's driving you through these times as you're growing up as an adult and ultimately to the point where, where you're here now, where did you find that motivation? What was driving you? Well, you know, it's going to sound kind of cliche, but um, honestly, I would tell myself that it was me and my kids against the world because um, my first husband, uh, the kid's biological father, was not in their lives. So I had to work, you know, two and three jobs, um, sometimes, you know, not sleeping, but maybe a couple hours a day. Um, but and I did not want my kids to to want for anything, but um, I still had ambition and I still had things that I wanted to do and I wanted that but I wanted them to be able to do what they wanted to do first so that that's what it was really it was like it was like my kids and I against the world and I knew that I had to fight and I knew I, knew I had to do every single little thing that I possibly could um and during the time that I was single and I had my eight children alone um before I married my husband I mean we would wake up you, the older kids will tell you we would wake up at five in the morning and we would go run you know, um, before school. Then we come back, take showers, eat breakfast. I take them to school. Um, at that time, I could beat them. Can't beat them now. But, uh, but um, so there was, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that my grandmother on my dad's side, um, Jane Martinez, she was that type of woman. I, I mean, she, she built um, nothing into something big that trickles down to the great, great grandkids today. Um, a very thriving business. Um, and she had a third grade education. Um, she had no quit in her. Um, and, and she was my role model. She was my inspiration and she was the one that I would call. Um, so there was just no giving up, you know, because if I gave up, there's all these little children that were looking at me, um, that would not have a place to go or food to eat or care. So I just, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't, couldn't give up. So with, you know, you mentioning some of your kids and, um, I've, I've, I've gotten to know some of them personally in the, in the aspect of uh, boxing. Um, can you speak a little bit of some of the ones that were into boxing, that got into boxing and, 
and you know maybe share a story here and there about each and one of them um, as they were sure. doing boxing. Absolutely. So my younger, I mean, my older children, um, they were very involved because, I mean, we lived in the gym. You know, I went to work, we lived in the gym, we came home, we showered, went to sleep. Um, so my, a lot of my, my sons went very far. Um, they went nationally. Um, and Christopher, he was on the World Series of Boxing, guitar professional. DeAnthony, my stepson, who is my son, you know, he lived with me forever, with forever and raised him since he was a kid. Um, he also was professional, and he had a very good record. Um, Jordan, same. Uh, uh, Nationals, um, Michael, Noah, Cameron. Um, Michael didn't go pro, neither did Cameron nor no Noah, but um, Jordan did. He still currently is, is, uh, is active. Um, he's in the team, team Combat League, which is a new, a new um, kind of, I guess, facet of boxing where they, they go one round, um, and it's a team sport. Um, and my daughter, too, she was also um, a national champion, and we had many more after that. But I think I think the, um, the, I'm just kind of segueing to kind of be naive and not really knowing the ropes and things. You know, we could have I, – I look back now, and I could have um, gotten them a lot far, farther. And, and when I say that, I mean um, I did not know that I needed to go to certain national tournaments. And then at times, you know, I, we didn't have the funds to do that because it does take money. You go, you go a week, a week, you know, in another state, another city, um, and you have to compete for that week. So um, sometimes there's a little bit of sadness there that I did not have the knowledge that I have now or the funds that I have now. But um, if I look back on my life and my story, um, I, I wouldn't change anything. But, you know, you do think about things you should have, would have, could have done. Well, you know what? As a person that knows you personally, I mean, I think you're still writing that story. And, you know, it's there's no end near uh, for for your trajectory and, and, and your story, for sure. I mean, some of the stuff that you're doing now, it's it's amazing, the world. And and if people get to know you and this is this is the point of this podcast today uh, to be able to share some of that. I mean, I know a lot of times we get to cover the talent uh, that's in the boxing industry for you. Um, but man, you know, it's, it's, it's a lovely opportunity for me to be able to share some of what you're doing and what you do. So I didn't want to ask this question and it's maybe a two parter to it, right? Is one is about your kids and how you were involved with it. You obviously had the background for it, but for a parent that, so again, two parts, right? Mm -hmm. One is as a parent, um, you know, not, not with the type of background you had, but in terms of the sport and how the sport is viewed at times by um, percentage of an audience, right. That looks at it like a violent sport, a dangerous sport, you know, what's your take on it for a parent that's thinking about getting their kid into the sport of boxing? Like what's your take on it? You know, a lot of times you have those, those doubters or the, or the people that speak of the sport negatively, but what yes. can you share with a parent in terms of the okay about getting them in, getting them into the sport you know, something from, from your point of view? Well, um, first, I think it, it really starts with our character as a person. Um, you can't be judgmental. Um, you have to be accepting because we're all different and we all need different things. You know, um, I can say that there have been many um, young uh, men and women coming through my gym that absolutely needed the sport. It is an outlet for anger. It is an outlet for for um, frustration, depression, anxiety, um, and it's very um, structured. There's a lot of discipline, and for a lot of um, young men and women, um, it was a, a home away from home. You know, some, you know, we like to believe that the world is just beautiful and everybody has a wonderful place to go. And we should all just play tennis or golf, and you know, life is just a picnic. But that is not the true reality for many. And um, so once we can accept that there's something for everyone um, and without judgment, then I think this world would be a lot better place. Um, there's a lot of violent sports out there. You know, I can name many, um, but I won't bore you all with that. But I would just say that um, if your child is looking for an outlet um, and needs something more and boxing is something that they want to do, that, that I think that all parents should be supportive of it. Because we already know that our kids aren't going to do what we say. They're going to do what we do. 
And if we say no, but we do whatever the hell we want to do, well, they're going to do whatever the hell they want to do too. So before I get to the second part of what I wanted to ask you there, um, just to still continue to piggyback on that, it was the, the state, the, the fear as a parent that whether or not, you know, my son's going to be okay, putting them in the sport. I know you're, you're sure. tapping into the, the gate, the, you know, them being able to escape their reality and things like that. But as a parent, that's like, you know, I don't know if I really want to put my kid in, in that sport. I don't want him getting beat up. I mean, I guess as a parent, right. That's the first sure. thing you think about, right. Sure. I don't want him getting Absolutely. hurt, him, him or her getting hurt. But, um, what do you tell a parent to give her those, those words of comfort and, and that it's okay to well, play a sport like I, this. Well, you know, um, um, boxing is is a punch game. You know, I mean, you do get punched. Um, you know, it is a punch and hit and don't get hit. That's what we we hope. If you have the right coach and you have have the right um, kid who knows how to pick things up like that. But I think that um, every parent should give their child an opportunity to at least try it out because. If you tell your kid, I don't want you to get beat up, well, you're kind of also telling them, I don't want you to fail, you're not good enough, or you may not be good enough. And I think that that is a wrong message to give to your child. I think that we should say, you can do anything you want to do, let's try it, let's see how it goes. Um, And then if the child decides, you know what, I don't like getting punched in the face, um, or you see that the coach is not protecting your child, you go to a different gym. But um, there's a lot of hidden messages that kids pick up on whenever we say certain things. Um, and then they come back later, years later, saying, Mom, remember when you said this? You didn't think I was good enough. Remember you said that? You thought I would suck. You know, so we have to really be careful with that. Um, I'm not saying that there's not going to be any fear. I'm not saying that um, you're going to be totally okay with it. But at the end of the day, don't we want our kids to be happy and well-rounded? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The reason why I was asking that question, too, is because I personally had the opportunity of asking you, you know, potentially putting one of my kids and in, including my daughter, you know, to to find that that avenue and opportunity to, you know, make her get away out of that routine, you know, get them out of boredom, keep them out of trouble, all of the above. Right. So, you yes. know, thank you for sharing that. And also, you know, wanted to make sure that we're sharing that with parents who are in the uh, consideration process or, or potentially you know, maybe getting their kids in, in, into the sport. The other part of it was asking you, because I know you mentioned if you would have known then what you know now and with money is a very important uh, factor in the opportunities that you get to do and with boxing and stuff. But what would be something you would share with a parent who's maybe potentially already has a kid in boxing, but something you wish you would have known then that no one shared with you. What's something you would share with a parent now that, you know, I know you talked in the, you talked about taking them to different tournaments and things like that, but what's the one thing that, that they can really benefit from that no one shared with you early on and you found out later down the road, what's something you would share with those parents? Um, well, after I was already in it and we're speaking of a parent that's already in it that doesn't, I didn't really know much at the time. And, and maybe this parent doesn't either. I would definitely, even if I'm at a gym, I would do my research and I would make sure that my child is at uh, the safest and most successful um, gym possible to fit my child's needs. Now, now maybe um, the child is not competing. So you don't care about, you know, going to tournaments and things like that, but is your child safe? You know, is this coach, certified is this coach um um does, does he have a good reputation he or she have a good reputation behind them and how do they treat um the boxers and the parents and and i think that i i would have done more investigating and seen where i could go and then if you do have you know a child that's in boxing that is is successful and seems to be pro- progressing and is in the right way you know does this gym um have fundraisers, you know, to, um, take these, these kids to, to all the qualifying, um, tournaments. If that's what the kid wants to do, just is the kid aspiring to go to the Olympics or do they just want to do it just for fun? So I think those are some things, some questions that you ask and you see, um, how they handle those things. And then on a personal level, you know, if you find yourself where you are at the good, a good gym and the coach is great and they do have fundraisers and they do help somewhat, but you're still following falling short and you still can't quite make it, you know, to the tournaments, maybe you have to work and you can't go. Um, 
this is also a two part answer. So you do your own fundraising in your family, you know, ask, Hey, this is what little Billy's doing or little Cynthia's doing, you know, um, would you like to, uh, she's selling waters. I always, I always wanted my kids to do something, not just ask for money. I wanted them to sell water, do, do the lawns, do something because whenever they have to work for something, I think they value it more. And then someone just giving them something. So I think that's very important, but that's just my own personal opinion. And then um, secondly, if you're not able to go, you know, be sure that you're going to the gym as much as possible so that you can meet other um, family members uh, of these boxers and coaches so that if you're not able to go out of town, but your kid has the opportunity that you trust someone enough with your kid to take them and take good care of them. So just, those are just a few little tidbits of things that I wish I would have known when I first started. Well, hey, thank you for sharing that. I'm sure someone will appreciate that knowledge. And um, speaking of good gyms, I know you yourself have a gym. Do you mind sharing yes. with us the name of the gym and its location, please? No, I don't mind at all. So it's Texas Select Boxing Club. It's 1918 East Centerville Road, Suite 101 in Garland, Texas. Um, we have been in business since 2007 and thank Jesus, thank the Lord, you know, all is well and has been well. We are a nonprofit. Um, that does not mean anything because that does not mean that people knock on your door and donate. <laughs> so, so we still ask for donations, uh, from our boxers monthly. Um, and then it's so beautiful because, um, our families, you know, donate water and things like that. And we have, you know, little parties or little fights watch parties you know um the families donate food and we just have a great time it's a great little family um i have had you know other national champs come out of there and we've had pros come out of there as well we're kind of starting over with a new breed and it's it's exciting it's very fun you know speaking to that of all the talent that comes out of your gym as well it's um you know i i tell you from my perspective that it's always it, it's always amazed me how We've got an opportunity to visit local gyms and stuff like that. And the amount of respect you get from the youth and even the the coaches, the coaches as well. You know, I know there's a competitive factor at times when when you have a gym and then you go to another gym and stuff like that. But, you know, competition is good. Right. But at the same yes. time, there's a big level of respect that I see from people left and right from the youth all the way to the OGs, you know, the veterans in the game. You know, they know coach Christine, Christine Lopez, and, you know, the, the kudos and accolades you've gained from in the ring with Christine. And, you know, it's just, you know, big shout outs to you on, on that note. Um, one of the, one of the questions I did want to ask you though, is there something that anyone can do? Like, I don't know how a nonprofit works, but can you get sponsorships? Can someone come out and, and other besides the donating part of it, but can, can you, can you get sponsors? Is that something that absolutely can do? Oh, absolutely. You know, um, you know, people with equipment um, to help with the gym or like even water or whatever. I mean, it doesn't always have to be monetary because, you know, we're doing well. Thank God. You know, we're at a time of our life where we're, we're, we're paying the bills. You know, there was a time when we weren't and we just didn't know what we were going to do. But we couldn't we couldn't let our kids down, you know, so we just did whatever we had to do. But um, yes, absolutely. I mean, um, I think the, the, the thing that I would want most is for people to come in and see what we do and to meet, meet the boxers and, and meet myself and my husband and the other coaches because then you kind of get a feeling of, of who we are and what we're doing. And then if, if your heart moves you to help in whatever capacity that you're able to, that you do that because it is for the community. You know, it's for the community in Garland. We have a lot, a lot of, of young men and women that come in and out that need to be there. And honestly, I mean, it's for us, too, because, I mean, it's so healing to be able to give back and, and to learn from each and every person that walks in, no matter what walk of life they are. You say all that, and I sit here and think of, like, all the movies that portray that, that storyline, right, of – of a troubled child um, and not necessarily on the negative aspect of it, but you know, a kid that get, joins the local gym and you see their triumph story and, you know, from rags to riches and, you know, just going from, you know, started at the bottom. Now we're here type stuff. You know what I mean? So yes. it's, it's so good, you know, uh, seeing that you, you and your husband play a big part in the community. 
uh, with that. Is there, um, what's the best ways anyone, if anybody wanted to help, what's the best way they can reach out to use their phone number, email? Yeah, anything? you know, um, so our email is Texas Select Boxing Club at yahoo.com. And we're on Instagram, Texas Select Boxing Club. And on Facebook, you know, they can message, they can email. Um, those are probably the best ways. Um, because I don't know if we're the only ones, but if we don't recognize the number, we usually don't answer it. <laughs> but, um, but those are probably the best ways. Probably nowadays, the biggest problem is all the <laughs> robo callers. You know, exactly. You, you're, you're That's what it is. Like, Either that or we got to pay a bill, you know. So, <laughs> that too. So, you know, so we, we were talking about your gym, but along with with your gym too, you're also doing stuff in, in outside of the gym. You're also doing stuff. Um, yes. Let me segue into this. You're uh, some sort of a, a, a coach in the Team USA boxing. Can you elaborate yeah, a little I'm, bit I'm on Yeah, I'm one that? of the um, high-performance um, coaches, national coaches for Team USA, which is such a blessing because um, it, I'm, go, I'm going on six years, um, and, and I'm not I'm not staff. I'm not on the payroll. You know, um, I do get I do get compensation, but each each camp there's an invitation. You know, well, I'm blessed enough to keep getting the invitation. You know, and and I I accept it and I love it and um, like I said, uh, it's been about six years. I had, uh, applied to do something like this probably five years previous, um, because you had to, at that time, you had to have certain accolades and, and, uh, you know, things, and, and I had them, and I sent them in, but I didn't get the call, and that was fine. I said, well, I'm just going to run my business, um, and keep taking care of my gym, and then um, about five years out, I did get a call, you know, hey, do you, are you so interested? Can you send in any new accolades? So, so I did that, and, um, and, and, and they accepted me to go up there, and, and I've been there ever since. And so kudos to my husband and, and Coach Robert and Sebastian and everybody else and my, my son, Little Hospital, that are at the gym because they've been carrying the load since I've been gone, you know. They've been – because of that, I've been able to uh, do what I do in, in Colorado and, and, you know, travel with the team. You know, I've, I've had, again, I kind of just chime in on the opportunities that I've had to, to be able to spend some time, you know, knowing your family, your husband, uh, your kids. I mean, you, you have none but great kids. I have nothing but positive things to say about your husband you. as well. Um you know, and I know you've, you've, there's been time spent away from home, but on the positive note, I mean, you're seeing some things, parts of the world that some Absolutely. people won't, won't ever get to see, but hopefully they do. Right. But can you speak a little bit to that? Like some of the places you've been, can you share a little bit of what countries and continents you've been to? Yeah, I, oh gosh, I've, I've been so blessed to be so many places. I mean, Germany, Spain, Ilan Ude, which is way up there by, um, oh my gosh, it's, it's like a Russian something. Um, oh gosh, my my mind goes blank. Well, um, I mean, you've been out there, Ireland Chile, too, right? Ireland, Ireland, Ireland. Italy. I mean, going I, I look Thailand, at some of the, Bulgaria. I see some of the pictures that you have on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. What's your Instagram, by the way? Uh, my Instagram is in the ring with Christine. In the ring with yes, Christine. Everything if, if you is get an same. opportunity to follow in the ring with Christine, make sure you follow her. But yes, some of please. the pictures you're posting out there, man, it's amazing. Like I, I know, and I mean, this is probably a few years back now, right? I mean, you talk about six years. I think I remember when you were barely doing the in um, the Team USA stuff, do. and yes, and now do. it now you it's six years. Like, yeah. um, you you mentioned some of the coaches and stuff like that. Could you? Could you give me uh, maybe an example of someone that's helped you? I know you talked in the past about people taking you under your wing and stuff like that. Is there, is there someone that's been very um, helpful in, in your venture with Team USA? Oh, yeah, for sure. So our head coach, uh, Billy Walsh, he's from Ireland. He is, for me, he is uh, the, the most, he is the greatest teacher that I've ever met. You know, I learn something from him every day, literally, like, he is so knowledgeable. He's been to many Olympics. Um, he helped train Katie Taylor and many others that I can't even name. He's got so many accolades. Um, and he um, he has been my a, a big inspiration for me because he's 60 
and he's still going strong. He's so smart. Um, his knowledge is just like unbelievable. And, and I would not be the coach that I am today, even though I had had so many, um, years prior, I would not be the coach that I am today had I not gone to with Team USA and been under his, his, uh, guidance. Awesome. And with all the traveling, I know I kind of had you going down the list, but you know, you've traveled to so many places. I, I couldn't imagine us being here listening to all the places you've been to. Right? Yeah, the, list, know, the list is I'm so long many. and I'm sure I'm I, I didn't want to catch yeah. you off guard there with, <laughs> with all the places you've been to. But um, yeah. can you share maybe a story of, of a place that you found very intriguing, like culture difference? Is this something that really wowed you uh, to one of these places you visited and where? Well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, like, right now, my all-time favorite place was Tokyo, Japan. Um, we went during, you know, the pandemic um, to the 2020, which was 2021 at the time, Olympics. And, um, you know, there was a lot of, of things in the news that they didn't want us there. The, the Japanese people didn't want us there. They were uh, protesting. They were boycotting us to be there and all of that. Um, it is... Probably, like I said, it's my favorite place, but the people there were the most hospitable, loving, accepting people that I have met anywhere in any country. Um, they um, were so happy for us to be there. Um, I, I love the way that they live. It's so clean. I mean, there's not even noise pollution. You can't even honk a horn. You can't turn your radio up. You know, the ambulance, you're like, wee, wee, wee. you know, the food is excellent. Um, and I mean, I had a gift almost every single day. So I, first I went to, um, uh, Miyazaki for a month and then we went to, um, Tokyo and every day that I was in the hotel, pretty much I was getting a gift, you know, from the front desk, you know, and when we, when we left, it was like the, the women that had been taking care of us, they were crying. They said they were going to miss us and the police come back. It, they were the most beautiful people that I've ever met. Um, and, and I, I will say this, we have, um, this is kind of, it's the same, same topic, but, but I didn't go to that country. So we also have, um, multi-nation camps where we have other countries come in or we have multi-nation tournaments and we have other countries come in and, and compete with us. Um, we had, um, China come in and you hear so much negative in the news about China. Um, they were lovely. They were absolutely lovely. I loved them. They were another one of my favorite people. You know, um, sometimes we get so caught up in, in, you know, the left, the right, and, you know, and that's, they, they, they want us to believe these certain things. And they just keep, it's like, they keep playing it until it's like, you know, it's just embedded in us and we're dreaming about it. But, you know, I, I just encourage anyone that's able to just, before you make judgment of anyone, um, any culture, any religion, any race, to get get to know them, like, and then make your own decision, you know. And that's something that I've learned um, as well over these six years. It's been a beautiful thing. So you you mentioned that, right? And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, as much as the the local people that I've seen um, interact with you in in boxing. They're everyone's so appreciative of, of things you, you do for them. Um, was there any one experience that you had with maybe even the China team or, or any other team in those multi uh, nationality camps that you, that you had? Like, is there, was there ever an experience of where someone showing their gratitude towards you because of something you taught them or, or shared with them? Is there, is there anything you can remember? Um, well, we had a multi-nation camp, and, and China was down. Um, they were one of the countries. And something that was – so, you know, there's a lot of countries that um, don't give women too much attention uh, for whatever, whether it be religion or culture or whatever. Um, and I've been to those countries before, too, where they won't look at me or shake my hand and, and all that, and that's okay. I respect their culture. Um, um, but um, I was actually wrapping uh, um, one of my – of our athletes' hands, and – the, the men came around me and they were just in awe, like almost in awe, like I could, you know, wrap hands being a woman. And so they started videotaping me and, and I thought that was just, I mean, it was kind of funny and kind of cute, but um, that was something that, that stood out to me, you know, when you mentioned that. You know, and uh, you mentioned that as well. And, and I'm, I'm sitting here thinking in this, in this particular scenario too, just 
just in the sport of boxing itself, I know now the the women population is also growing in, in the media mm-hmm. side and, and boxing as well. But, you know, early on when there wasn't as many women, like what's what's something you can share? I know you're real big on, on women empowerment and things yes. like that. So going back to like the, if I knew then what I know now, you know, for, for a female coach and at the caliber that, that you're in with Team USA, what's something that, you know, you can share with an up and coming coach that's trying to get in with the examples of like Team USA or anywhere else or trying to just get into the the the, the world of boxing, right? As a woman, what's something mm-hmm. that you can share with them that, that will definitely help them out in their in their in their run or career? I think really getting um getting next to a, 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 a woman in the sport that they trust that seems to be accepting and sharing of their knowledge because you know, there are um, women in the sport, and, and I'll just tell a little quick story. Um, when I first got in um, the gym that I was at, um, there was another female coach that was there that was before me, and she w- did not like the fact that I was going to start coaching, and she made it very difficult. Um, she gave me a really hard time, and um, I hadn't been there very long, and we went to a tournament, and she handed me you know, a roll of gauze and tape and said, here, wrap these girls' hands. Never showed me how, never, you know, took me out of her wing to teach me. Um, uh, Another coach had to come over and show me, and then we just went through it and did it. But um, I can remember how I felt. I felt very defeated for a moment. Um, But then again, there's something inside of me that said, you know what, fuck that. (laughs) I'm going to get it done. I'm going to, I don't care what I have to do. Even if it's wrong, I'm going to do it the best of my ability. Um, so I think that um, I think it's beautiful that there's a lot of women coming up. I just um, I just think that if someone's coming up and they're serious and, and also you have when you first come in, you have to be humble. You If there's somebody that you look up to or whatever, you have to be able to take what they're saying. Um, I've also met women who have been in the sport a little while and. I, I used to always want to like try to help everybody and and, all, and I still do if they want it. And I would try to give advice. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Okay. And you know, it's like, it's kind of like, shut up. I know what I'm doing. So I'm like, okay. And I stand back and then I watch and see what they do. And some, some do and some don't. So I think that um, if you're trying to come in, you also have to come in very humbly, not knowing everything, knowing that you don't know everything. I don't know everything. I've been in the sport since 2000. You know, I don't know everything. I'm still learning. As I mentioned before, I learn every time I go to camp with, with Coach Billy. I think the day that we know everything is the day we just, you know, get a shovel and put ourselves in the dirt. It's over. We're done. Um, man, that's some very good insight. I think a lot of times it's hard for people, uh, especially when, when you know. And, and I know, man, it's got to be tough, too, because the person I know, Christine, is a person that's really good at their craft. and and they know what they're doing. But like you mentioned, you have to humble yourself and, and get, get in to be able to, to be open-minded and learn and learn from people. I'd imagine that's tough, uh, but I'm glad you tapped into that because, you know, sometimes we need to be reminded of, of, of being able to, you know, be open-minded and, and giving us the opportunity to learn and, and grow. But like I said, you know, I know, you know, your stuff, but it's good to know that even you yourself are, are willing to kind of, humble yourself to, to be open-minded and, and, and get taught by, by others that are Absolutely. been longer, longer in the game. Yes. Speaking of, speaking of that and, and collaborative um, kind of just relationships and stuff, tell me about your women crushing it Wednesdays. You know, I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the show. I'm seeing the show. Um, yeah. You got Nika on the show and I know there's all the other um, ro- rotating uh, personalities that you've had in the past, but I know you have yes. a, a solid group solid right now. Solid group now, yes. Yeah, and and you you mind sharing that with me again? Who was who's no? The, who, who are so your now it's members? Crystal. It's uh, uh, Nika and uh, uh, Crystal. Um, they're fabulous. So it's so funny because I'll tell you how I, how I met them. Um, so I had not ever been on Twitter before, and people were like, "Oh my God, you gotta go to Twitter. That's where all the news is, all the boxing. You're gonna get it first there." So I made an account, and I was just saying, eh, I didn't know how to use it. I was frustrated, you know me, you know me and my technical stuff. Um, and I was just like, eh, forget it. So I put it up for a minute, and then I was like, you know what, let me try again. So I did. So 
I saw like a few women on there that were like really talking about boxing and like really knew what they were talking about. I was like, man, this is awesome. And I had already had in the room Christine and I would do interviews, you know, on occasion, but I really wanted to do more. But I had this, I always had this idea of like um, a forum of women speaking boxing, like nothing formal, like we're sitting at a bar at a restaurant, having some drinks, we're, we're talking boxing, like, like I would, like a, amongst friends, you know, um, and so I always had that vision in my mind, so um, I tried to see how to formulate it, and I asked some, some other women that I knew, and they weren't interested, they didn't think it was going to, you know, pan out, and this and that, I was like, well, I'm still, I mean, I am the type of person where if I want to do something, I'm going to do it, even if I get all these no's, so I just kept with it, kept with it, um, and I have had a few other women before Crystal, um, and maybe Nika, there might have been one before Nika, but then nika has been the solid, um, that came through, and they thought they wanted to do it, and there's things happen, and it's a commitment, I mean, it's every Wednesday, you know, it's um, 8 Central, it's for an hour, um, and, and it's a commitment, and some people aren't willing to, to commit to that, but these two women have been very solid, um, and, and I wanted to have three, um, I didn't want to have too many or too little, because if somebody can't come, then there's still two of us, you know, or whatever, um, and it's worked out very well, we've had some really big names on the show, and we have more big names coming, um, and it's been very exciting. We, we did get monetized and now we're earning some, some bucks and, um, I'm excited to see where it's going to go from here. Oh man, the show's great. I've had an opportunity to tune in. I can't, you know, I can't say I've, I've watched every single one of them, but you mentioned what? Wednesdays, Wednesdays <laughs> at eight o'clock central standard yes. time, right? Make sure yes. y'all tune in, man. It's a great show. Um, the guests that y'all have on there, y'all have had Jamel Herring, y'all have had, uh, perfecting athletes. Y'all have had, um, Bud Terrence Crawford. Bud Crawford. Um, yes, you know, it, it, it's, it's yeah, definitely so very many. funny. You guys have great chemistry, you know, bouncing off all the, the different personalities on there. And I could shout out to her, yes. um, yeah. and everyone else on your team, you know, that's, you guys are doing great things. So keep that up. And I definitely wanted to shed some light on that so that people can Thank tune into you. your show and, and continue to grow it. I mean, like you said, you're going to have more and more, uh, guests on there. So, if I can ask this, I know you have um, new talent that comes from Team USA. Is there anyone mm -hmm. or someone that doesn't know who should we who should we be on the lookout for? You know, who's the next breed to come out and 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 be that next talent? That I mean, I, and I know the list is probably going to be long because I know you got nothing but great talent out at Team USA. But um, you know, let me know. Let me know new handles who I can go follow on on next. Well, there are thirteen that you need to follow because there's thirteen on the team, and they are all going to do amazing. I all have high hopes for them all. We have six that are qualified right now to go to the Olympics, and uh, we are going to qualify the other seven um, in Thailand. So, you know, going to Team USA, um, there's the roster there um, on Instagram USA uh, Boxing. And um, every single one of them that's on the team, the males and the females, are excellent. I think I know that this time, that this team, this squad, we are bringing back goals. We are bringing back goals for sure. Is there is there anyone that you had the opportunity to to be in the in training with that's now a pro? Is there someone that yeah? Has turned um, pro I since? was I was in uh, with Keyshawn. Um, Richard Torres, I mean, all the past Olympians, Tiger Johnson, you know, um, uh, Shushu Carrington, um, I don't want to miss anybody, um, um, Ocean Jones, um, uh, uh, Jenny Fuchs, um, there, there's still, oh, I know I'm missing someone, Jared Anderson, um, there's so many. There's so many that I've that I've been blessed enough to be in camp with and work with. Um, you know, um, Xander Zayas, um, he was not on the team at the time, but he came back to camp to train with the team. I was able to work with him. Um, French Alcruz came and she sparred and, and um, was able to see that. And, um, it, it, there's been so many, you know, um, and, and it's, it's been such a blessing. It really has. 
Yeah, no, I, I definitely don't want to put you in a spot where you're forgetting anyone, but you know, no, I just good. wanted to share, share the opportunity with, with the audience that, man, you've, you've been there before and now they're, you know, they're on the professional side and you're also working with the next generation of, of talent that's going yes. to end up hitting pro. It's a blessing. Um, going back to, to the media stuff that you've done in boxing, you, not only are you doing Woman Crushing at Wednesdays, but you also had an entity or have an entity, which is in the ring with Christine, where you've done uh, media coverage, right? And yes. you're out there yes. in these boxing, these boxing fights. And I think you've recently did uh, a big event as well. Can you, you mind sharing yes. that and what that experience is like? Absolutely. I was just in Vegas last weekend uh, for the Tam Zoo and Fandora um, card and, and Pitbull was on there and Rolly Romero. Um, and, the, the whole card was stacked. It, it was it was so electrifying and it's so wonderful. Shout out to PVC because thus far that is like the the, the most I don't know action packed um, and and evenly you know matched um, card that I've seen in a long time. Um, and I was so excited because it was the first time that PVC gets the credentials. I went to PVC fights. Obviously, I went to Spence and Crawford, but I was not credentialed. So kudos to them. And I've also got to do um, about uh, two or three interviews for PVC, which is really great because they reached out to me and they allowed me to do that. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy. The brand is growing. Um, I'm blessed and, and all is good in the world. You've done uh, not not just this last fight. I mean, you've done a lot of other great fights, too, for yes. under other other promoters as well. Absolutely. Um, Top rank. Um, yeah. Matchroom. Golden Boy. Absolutely. Do you have do you have one experience that you would share that you're like, man, this fight? I mean, I know Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence was definitely had to been one that was that was up there. Right. Uh, top 10. I mean, oh, that, for was, sure. uh, that was definitely a, a great fight. And, um, you know. You've had the opportunity to interview Bud on your, on, on your show, so yes. you know, tell us what, what all that's like. Well, you know, um, the, the fight that comes to mind, Gonzo, is the fight that we went to in Mexico when Mugia fought um, with our late beautiful friend, Stacy. Um, whenever you talk about, like, a memorable fight or a memorable moment, I mean, that's the first fight that comes to mind, and I've been to many. I've been to many fights. But that one um, was excellent. I think, um, you know, we had a great time. We were working media together. Um, we uh, were in good company, and we were in your hometown. Um, and the crowd got kind of crazy. And we thought if we get in and get his hand raised, we might have to run out of there with, with our life. <laughs> so, you know, um, and I was, that's when I was able to uh, interview him get his grandmother. And um, so that, that is, like, um, my talk. Because because of not only um, where we were and we were with and and all the fun that came with it. Yeah, no, absolutely, definitely, a definitely memorable moment. Top top five, top three. You know, yeah. um, you, you talk about Mungia and he has a fight coming up, and you yes. and, and with who else other than Canelo? Which right. you've also covered a lot of Canelo fights. And yes, I have. Just being there now with both fighters and this fight comes to fruition and now you have Canelo fighting Mungia. You talk about that whole experience with Mungia. You, we've had the opportunity to interview him personally. Um, you know, and, and, and the, big, the biggest one, man, that hurts, it's obviously knowing that, you know, our, our friend Stacy, you know, who, who we love dearly, um, you know, just being with her and, and her showing us a lot of the game and the ropes oh, of, yes. of how she knows, um, or rather, you know, the fact that she would share all that knowledge with us and stuff like that. But yes. now, Mungia, you know, you've had an opportunity to even mingle or, or, or share interviews and moments stuff with his family. I mean, what's all that like? You know, you have Canelo on one side and then you have Mungia. How does that all play out? What's your take? I know predictions is something that, you know, media doesn't like to tap into because yeah. you know, you're picking a side, but, you know, feel free right. to share anything you want with us, Christine. You know, at the end of the day, um, I'm a boxing fan. So, you know, obviously um, I'm a human too, so I get emotional. And when I get to know one fighter over the other fighter or their family and, and things like that, at the end of the day, um, I'm, I'm a boxing head and, and I want to see a good matchup. And I have um, in my boxing brain who, who will win. Um, 
Um, I, I've seen some improvement in Olvia. I have um, in his defense. Um, so I'm very pleased for that because it was something I was critical of for many years. Um, I believe that he's very strong. He always has been. And Canelo, you know, a lot of people think that he's, oh, he's slowing down. He's getting older. I don't think he's slowing down. I don't see him slowing down. I don't see him getting weaker. I don't see him losing any pep in his step. So um, I don't mind this fight. Like, this is going to be a competitive fight. I think it's going to be more competitive than people think. Um, I don't get my prediction right now um, just because I'm still looking at some factors. But um, I think it's going to be a good one. Everybody's like, oh, but David Benavides, David Benavides. Well, that's not on the table right now. Yeah, it is. So let's let's rejoice and enjoy and and you know see what happens. So so let me let me pick your brain, and I hope I don't put you in a, in a, in a bad position in terms of uh, <laughs> no, in terms good. of you giving your insight. But this is you know we've been in conversation this this whole time, and then now we lead to the to the meat of it, right? This is this uh-huh. is where. You, this is your playground. This is what you know best and things like that. So I really kind of wanted to tap into a little bit of, of the background and, and your gym and all the personal stuff. But right here, this is where the nitty gritty happens. That got a name. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so let me ask you a few questions just for the audience to understand. And, and maybe even for myself, I don't, I don't know everything in the game. That's why I bring the professionals onto the podcast. <laughs> and one thing first is the whole you know, Benavides thing. People people want the Canelo Benavides. Why doesn't that fight happen now? How did the Munguia thing happen? You know, what's your take on that? And and I know that, you know, maybe we don't know all the details, but what what would you be able to share with us in terms of why the Benavides well, there, fight there's doesn't a lot, happen? There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, you know, that, that people don't know about. And I'm not going to name any names, and I'm not going to say this is the situation. I'm just going to say that I know of situations where there are promoters and their boxer is is set up for a title defense or a rematch or something, and they're fighting another big name for that. So they know that um, their fighter, um, there's money behind the other fighters, and maybe they don't have to put any money in there. Maybe they don't have to put as much money in there. But if they fought other boxers, you know, they would have to put their money up. And and. It's, it comes down to the mighty dollar. It really does. Because at the end of the day, all these guys and girls are boxers. They are warriors. They see red. You know, there's nobody afraid of anybody. There's nobody ducking anybody. It comes down to the mighty dollar. It's business. Period. So, so I, don't, I don't recall the exact number, and I know um, the – the audience will probably kill me for this because everybody already knows that everybody's on X figuring this stuff out. But I believe what he say, what do he say? 150, 200 million uh, Canelo when he said he'll make yeah. it happen. If someone gives yeah. him that money. Yeah. You know. So, so but look, listen, you're, you're, you're king of the hill, right? You know that people are salivating for this fight. Absolutely. You, you can pretty much ask for whatever you want. So he put a number out there. And if the number comes to fruition, fruition, then he's going to fight. Like, why not? Why not? If you are the king, why not ask for what you think that you're worth? When he, when he said that, it reminded me of the, um, the part from the SWAT, the movie, where the guy got uh-huh. locked up. And he goes, I'd give anybody $150 million, whoever gets me out. If you don't know it, <laughs> I'll, I'll share the clip. But... Okay. So does that ha- does that fight happen though? With the right amount of money, does that does that fight happen? Does Canelo yeah, want it? Yeah, why does he not? Make it, I, does it happen? Does he make it happen for Benavides? I think he doesn't care about Benavides. He'll make it happen for himself if that's what he wants to do. You know, we don't know. Like you know what? He might after this fight retire. He can if he wants to. He still can do whatever he wants to do. Or he might say, you know what? I'm only going to fight two more times or whatever. He can do whatever he wants. If he wants to put David in the equation, it's not for David. It's going to be for him because he asked for what he wanted, and he's going to expect to get that. He's not going to do anybody any favors. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. I know you, you talked about they see red, but I know they also see green, you know? so. so. <laughs> um, you know, um, speaking of SO, uh, you know, that's uh, shout outs to uh, the whole training staff over there with um, Terrence Crawford, OMAC, Red, absolutely. Uh, Saul. Um, yes. You know, that, that whole fight, do you, going back to that, I know I'm going to go back to Crawford and, and, and Spence, not, you know, 
I'll I'll come back to Munguia and Canelo, but yeah, sure. the um, that fight, the outcome for that, did is that what you were expecting? Did you absolutely, just, absolutely? Yeah, you, oh, okay, I knew it was going to be a wipeout. Right. Absolutely. Um, man, it's just it's it's tough. I know for both sides. I know sometimes everybody was. I know the 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 environment. I I was out there too, and just seeing it, it was it was split down the middle. You know, you had yeah. and, and I mean in the sense of the crowd supporting supporting oh, yeah. um, their fighters, right? You had a right. lot of people for Spence, a lot of people for Crawford. I don't know. I think there was more Spence fans. You think it was yeah. in the middle? Yeah. No, no. I mean, I, I'm just saying in general, just like seeing them yeah. throughout the hotel, you know, stuff right. like that. I mean, I don't I don't know an exact number. It probably was more for Spence. Um, yeah. There was uh, quite, a, quite a lot of celebrities out there for the fight, as there is for, for many others. Um, yes. One of the one of the things that um, that really stood out to me was the um, the celebrities that came out to to support to support that fight. I mean, they everybody was speaking that this was the fight of the century, fight of the decade, mm-hmm, fight mm-hmm, of the year. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, did you um, you remember the whole Eminem thing? Like, did did that surprise oh you? Did gosh. you did you really think Eminem was going to show up? And that was and like to Crawford's, the most uh, beautiful you know, walk in ever like that. Nothing can beat that. Nothing has come close to that for me. That was beautiful. It was excellent. I mean, but you know, you've gotten to meet him too. It's like, he's a freaking genius. Like he does things. People don't know his, his uh, personality and and the way that he is, but he's extra. He does things over the top and he's going to win no matter what. And he won with that. You know, it's like as soon as you see Eminem walk out, if you even thought for one second that Spence was going to win, which I really wasn't, you man, you might as well walk, hang it up. You know, it, it was electrifying. I, I saw, I believe it was, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it was a, like an Instagram post where he had told him, he was like, you know, pull up. And then, I, and then yeah. I started speculating. I was like, oh, man, what if Eminem shows up? And, right. And then, right. and then when they were doing the walk-ins and I'm hearing the song and it's just like, he just happened to be one of those people that I thought I would never see live. And then right. there you go. Eminem comes out and, <laughs> and, and show some love and support to, uh, oh, to, to Bud Crawford. Very well deserved. Yes. And, and big shout outs to his win. Now, let me ask you again. I don't know. I'm not the pro. You're the pro here. Let's, <laughs> let's figure this out. Um, so after the Fenduro fight, uh, Spence gets in the ring, right? Uh, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, and he's calling out the winner of that particular fight. How does that happen um, for someone that doesn't know when when people are still waiting for that rematch? Is that rematch happening? Is it is it vanished? Is it long gone? The, the and, Spence and, and, and Crawford rematch? Correct, right. Yeah. Yeah, I, where I is that rematch? And then how does he, and I'm sorry, I didn't even cut you off. Oh, you're how fine. Does, how does he get that before Crawford's getting, you know, a shot at, you know, a next big fight? Well, I, I will say this. I don't think that the rematch is happening. I don't think it's good for Spence for it to happen, and I don't see the worth um, in it for, for Bud. Um, and number two, how does he get the shot? Well, he doesn't necessarily have the shot. Um, Bud can do pretty much whatever. He can pretty much fight whoever he wants. I, I kind of may have an idea of who he's fighting next. And, and, um, Spence is just, um, they invited him to come and sit in the audience and, and that's the weight class. And, and that's what happened. You know, um, there was a, um, a verbal agreement for a rematch between Fandora and, um, and, and zoo. And, um, hopefully they, they will honor that, but it's going to be at least another six months because, you know, zoo was cut so badly. Um, and there's no way that Fandora would be dumb enough to take a fight with Spence as a tune-up in between that time. Because Spence is still a live dog. And Fandora is is still a baby when it comes to the seasoned veterans that run their way around the ring. Does Zoo lose that fight without the cut? Um, I saw Zoo winning the fight, in my opinion. Um, I thought that if he had not been cut, that he would have won the fight. Um, at the at the post um press conference, he stated they asked him. They said you were losing so much blood. Were you getting weak? Like what was the problem? And he said I could not see. I could not see anything. There was so much blood in his eyes. And if you watch, you can see there's so much blood in his eyes and his face, and he's wiping it, and it's just more in his eyes. 
you know, for him to be able to last the way that he did and do as well as he did, not being able to see says a lot about his character. So and I know well. that uh, you guys, you guys chimed into that in your, in your podcast and your episode, uh, your most, one of your most recent episodes, right? Where yes. you guys talking about the cut. And there was also a reference to uh, Badu Jack and his cut, yes. right? It was, just, yes. it was crazy. We're watching this fight and everyone's like, Oh my God, warriors. And you know, right. it, it, it's, it's just crazy to watch a crazy fight like that. Now, can, can I go? But, can I go back real quick with, between the difference between Badu Jack and Tim Zhu and their cuts? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go is ahead. the way that it, the way that it was cared for, the way that they they were the difference between the care, the difference between the professionalism and the corner. You know, obviously it looked as though Tim Zhu's corner did not have adrenaline to coagulate the blood. He only put a Q-tip on it, wiped it, and put Vaseline. And as soon as he moved his hand, it just poured again. Badu Jack had a tremendous cut, man, and and he immediately stopped the blood, even though it looked like, oh, my gosh, he had had an axe, you know, put through his forehead. Um, yeah. The blood was controlled. So now let me, uh, going back to that, uh, in or in reference to that, can you explain if you know the rule of how that happens? If, if his corner says he couldn't see in the earlier rounds, uh, when does that happen? At what point is it like a no contest? And at what point it's a, you go to the scorecards? Well, I mean, honestly, they could have stopped it in the first round as soon as it happened. But, you know, this was such a big pay-per-view card. This was such a big card. There was a lot of money to be lost, you know, and also for both guys. It's, it's um, sometimes you make that executive decision to, to go on or, you know, and it could have been honestly stopped in any round. And the corner could have stopped it. The doctor could have stopped it. The ref could have stopped it. But I'm sure they all were getting that side out and don't stop it. You better not stop it, you know, yeah. um, from the powers that be. Um, I mean, you think that, right? Because even, even when you're paying, what yeah. you're paying for a pay-per-view, you're like, they better not stop it. Absolutely. You know? If we're not the ones in there, we're like, oh, no, you can go. Yeah, let's keep going. Right. This is a bloodbath, and I love it. Um, you know, I'm I'm believing that the way that the rules are is after the fourth round, you know, you go to the scorecards. Um, I thought that that's kind of what they were going to do, but it didn't happen. It went all the way through. And literally, I mean, um, watching the fight, and you want to watch the fight, you can see they had blood from front to back, like the chest, the back. I mean, they were covered. It looked like a massacre for both yeah. because Fedora's nose was also leaking so bad. I think his nose probably was broken. It did not stop bleeding at all. And he'd wipe it too, and it'd be all over him. And, you know, it's all over the gloves, and they're punching each other. And it was, it was, uh, the, one of the bloodiest scenes I've seen in a long time. It reminds me of old school boxing, like way back in the day when they would just go. Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely very uh, interesting to watch with that much blood mm -hmm. going out there and stuff like that. What about the um, the Coleman event? Your thoughts on Pitbull and and Roly? Did um, Roly eat some of his words and you know the whole yeah. Chihuahua comment? What was going? Yeah, on you that? know, it's it's Roly's an entertainer. I mean, he can definitely sell a fight, lose the fight. He's funny, you know. Um, I don't know what he's gonna do with that Chihuahua necklace. I hope it was fake. You know, so he didn't spend too much money on it. And probably is not, though. And then he also had another one I saw in the email. I took a picture of it where he had the belt, you know, all encrusted in, like, rubies and all this other stuff. But, um, you know, it, it did happen the way that I thought it would. Um, I, Pitbull is a Pitbull. Um, and he was very calm, cool, collected. And he just stalked his prey. Um, he did exactly what I thought he was going to do. And, you know, then after the fact, whenever Roly was being interviewed, I kind of have to feel sorry for him. I have to kind of have to think, man, does this kid need to get back in the ring again? You know, as a mom, that's what, what I'm thinking. Do you think uh, his message is just like a genuine message he had? Or do you really think those punches to the head really affected him and, and what he had to say after, after that I fight? think that he was out of it for a minute. I think that yeah. he had to gain his bearings. I really do. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, every time I, I watch something, a video clip or something like that, I'm heading to the comments and, you know, the internet is, is ruthless. Oh, and, ruthless. you know, some of the, some of the stuff that, you know, they're saying just because he was, he was just out there and, and he was just like happy Easter stuff like that. You know, I'm not going to knock the guy, man. Hopefully he gets back right. at it again. And, you know, um, yeah, I'm thinking the stoppage was just right. You know, just uh, be able I mean, to help they him honestly and, stopped it earlier. He was hurt earlier in the fight, but. You know, yeah. again, it's pay-per-view and it's a big card. So, uh, 
Jumping into another fight, we have uh, Devin Haney and uh, Ryan Garcia. Yeah. The whole press conference thing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing he's uh, coming out in a, on a horse. And, uh, you know, yeah. let me ask you this. Your thoughts on, do you think that's more of antics or is Ryan Garcia really the entertainer and he's doing something that potentially any other entertainer like Floyd could have done? You know, come out on a horse, make it big, grandiose. Is he being an entertainer or like Devin says that it's the immaturity in him and he's, he's worrying about the wrong things and come fight night, he's going he's gonna to learn that the hard way? Well, we know that Ryan Garcia knows how to make millions of dollars off of social media and the internet. We know that. You know, um, he knows how to, to fill his bank account and he's going to continue to do that. Um, is he grandiose? So, yeah, he is. He he. He is self-proclaimed king, you know, King Ryan. So, of course, he is. Um, I personally um, would not spend my money to go to New York because who knows if this fight is going to take place. And, and at first, it was Vegas. People made their reservations in Vegas and did this and they you know, now it's New York and they lost money there. And I, I just, it's kind of like a, a wild card. It's kind of like a playing Russian roulette, like, are we going to get this fight or are we not going to get this fight? You know? Do you think, do you think it has anything to do with the, um, the problems he was experiencing personally that, um, you know, I'm not sure what it was, but depression right. or, or him feeling some of that, um, you know, what do you make of that? Um, you know, I, I'm not trying to minimize anyone's um, mental health because I personally have experienced, you know, depression, anxiety, and, and things like that, too. And I think that everybody does go through that at some time or another, and some, some people are just deeper and worse, obviously. Um, but I believe that um, if he – he wouldn't be doing what he's doing if he was still in that state. So that was then. This is now. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, we, we've all been through it, right? But this is where we're at. This is what we're doing. So then, there's no excuses, is what I'm yeah, saying. No, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping the best for, for both teams. You know, as a fan, mm. I definitely enjoy to see the fight happen. Um, and it's entertaining to watch both of their, uh, you know, their jabs at each other, right? You know, mm -hmm. with, between De uh, Devin Haney's camp and, and also Ryan Garcia. And that's just for any fighter, right? We're just covering the news and we're yes. covering the media events and stuff like that. But, right. you know, you definitely want the best outcome for both camps. And Absolutely. You know, let, it be, let it be an entertaining fight. There, is there any one fight that you're um, looking forward to? And, and if so, which one? Upcoming huh. fight. You know, um... That I'm just really, really looking. Is there any one fight that's doing it for you right now, or or maybe not? You know, there's there's fights coming up. You have yeah, you, you know, um, I think that um, the, the fight that I went to last weekend that was the one that I really wanted to see, and, and now you know there are other ones. I I don't know if if the Hayden or Garcia fight do happen. I don't know how excited I am to see it because I'm just not really sure. Uh what the outcome's going to be. I mean, as far as I mean, I I, I know Haney's going to win in my mind, but I don't know that I want to see, um, I don't like to see boxers just totally get, um, embarrassed the way Rolly did. Yeah. You know, no, absolutely. um, so yeah, there's, there's not, a, I mean, I, obviously I'm, I'm excited about, uh, Carello and, um, and, and Mugia, um, but nothing that's really just, you know, you know, no. I mean, what about, you? Have, what about uh, you? <laughs> Lomachenko, Kambosis. I'm, I'm just a fan of the sport, yeah. you know, honestly. Yeah, you know, I, Lomo and Kambosis. Eh. Eh. Uh, Bivol, better be if, you know, you have that. That's a good one. Too. That's a good you one. Know. You know, um, uh, you know, Tyson Fury, Usyk, um, they're a little, you know, ways down, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think Tyson so, Fury and Usyk. So do we get to see you covering a fight coming up next in Saudi Arabia, maybe? Man, look, I, would I even be allowed in there? You know, would I be, even be allowed? Like, I don't know what the laws hey, are. Like, I have kick, tattoos. You kick, you kick down the door. Right. Kick down the hey, door. I'll, hey, I'll, you I'll, kick down you the know, door. do whatever I got to do. Hey, you know, tell that, them, that would hey, be great. Hey, tell them you're all that and a bag, bag of, of chips. chips. Let's Yo. go. <laughs> um, you know, I'm telling you, you're not knocking at the door. You're kicking it down. You're opening doors for a lot of women. 
that are coming behind you and even the women that are on your podcast with you, stuff like that. I did want to ask you, this is something, you know, I appreciate all your insights and, 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 you know, not being shy of, of having a, a pick, you know, I think a lot of times people hear someone's response and instead of just respecting someone's personal opinion, they get a little um, offended yeah. by it, but you know what it right. is, what it is, right. You know, yeah. you have the right, you have the right to voice that opinion. You know, I wanted to ask you, and I meant to ask you this a little bit earlier when we were talking more personal stuff, but what's one quote that really, if you, if you can think of a quote that you live by on the motivating side, something that motivates you, what's that one, you know, quote that you just kind of tell yourself and, and gets you going either through the day, finding the motivation to find, you know, the energy and, and motivation you need. Something, something that, um, that our late friend Stacey used to always tell me was you walk in that bench like you own the place like wherever you're going you walk in there like you own the place you know um and that's something that um, i pass on to other people too and then you know if i get to where um i'm having self-doubts or you know i'm unsure about certain things i i, I ask myself if not me then who you know um, am I going to sit back and let somebody else do it or am I going to do it? So those are just two things, just little, you know, nothing fancy, nothing, you know, clever, just some things to motivate me. Yeah. So it's funny. It's funny you answer that second part of it because that was going to be another one for me to ask you, like when, when, when the things get tough and stuff. So that second part that you added to that, that was automatic. That was perfect. I was getting ready to ask you that. Um, yeah. you know, I have. I don't think I've ever spoken on it just because since, since I've known about it, I, it's been hard for me to share any of that. So just even hearing the name is tough, but, um, you know, a lot of respect for, for what Stacy did for, for me seeing it firsthand with you and, and for me just kind of like opening those doors and, and, um, you know, showing you the way. So the, the yes. quote that you're using, it's exactly to one of those things that even just with me and my friends, we share that too, right? That, that just act like you own that bitch, you know, and just walk in yeah. there and, and, you know, and, and one of the biggest things she would always be like, just go, we'll figure just it go. out once we get there, Absolutely. you know, so, Absolutely. So, <laughs> so, you know, you know, she's dearly missed, uh, yes. you know, couldn't, couldn't put how much I miss her in words, but, um, you know, Christine, thank you so much for, for taking the time and, 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 you know, sharing what you did with us today. So I hope someone gets something out of it. Um, you know, um, you're very busy and like I, like I, that's why I wanted to get this out of the, uh, out of the way today versus pushing it and rescheduling for another day, because you know, this won't be the first or the last. So we're going to come back and you know, there's more fights happening. There's more stuff you're doing across the, the game in the world of boxing. So um, I do want to ask, is there anyone that you would want to give a special shout out to, you know, I know there's a list of people, but any, anyone special, anyone you want to shout out? Something I'd like to do is, um, you know, I want you to pretend like you have a shot in your hand and, and I have um, a shot that we took together um, with Stacy too. And um, so I'd like to take a shot for Stacy. I'm not going to literally do it, but, but that's, that's um, the shout out that I have. I have a shout out to her. We have great memories with her. This is one of them, um, you know, our own little little jokes and, and stuff like that, but really just a shout out to her, you know, um, there's been so many people that have helped me, um, too many to, to, um, name, but she has been the biggest inspiration and motivator and teacher, um, with a lot of things um, to do with boxing for sure. So I shout out to her and to you too, my brother, because you, you were there from the beginning, you know, on this media journey. So I appreciate you so much. Oh, and we're still there, you know, and, and they're Absolutely. still going to see, see more of you, more of me, you know, so, yes. you know, thank you, you know, for spending some time and, you know, continue writing your story, man. I was overly excited to do this with you today. Same. And, you know, again, I can't, I can't put it in words how much, you know, I value your expertise, your thoughts, your friendship, you know, so make sure everyone go follow Christine on all her social media outlets. And if anything, you want to shout out Christine. Uh, before we jump off, thank you so much, Christine. The yes, floor is thank yours. you. So yeah, just um, everybody, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, In the Ring with Christine. I have a show on Mondays um, with D Style Boxing, uh, box topics, um, 
um, at least once a month. I have a show on Fridays, Friggin' Fridays. Um, but the, the show that um, is most known and I'm most known for is Women Crush Night Wednesdays with my girls, Nike and Crystal. We have great guests on there. Sometimes it's just us, but we always have a lot of fun. We're very involved with our chat. You know, we, we like to make everybody feel special because they are. So everybody subscribe. All my social media outlets um, are in the room with Christine. Thank you so much. Shout out to you. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everyone. Have a good time.